I've been teasing this book in the past few videos, and now it's time to talk about it. Game Masters here, and today we are diving into our review of the Planescape Archive, a third-party uh, creation by Matt Kimberlin, someone that's been creating content for a while now, and, and a book that I've been getting a lot of questions about in my past few videos. And yes, I realize that today is also the release day for the official Planescape book, but as I've said in the past, my channel has been here always to help promote third-party content creators. And to state this right off the bat, this, uh, this book, PDF, it, it's worth it. You'll note that I'm holding a physical copy. Uh, that's because I print out my own. I enjoy the digital version uh, well enough, but I prefer to take a physical copy with me. But I am told that a physical hard copy is available for $29.99, whereas if you just want the PDF itself, the digital version, it's $14.99. That all said, let's jump into it. First, I need to read the disclaimer. You guys know that I absolutely just adore uh, disclaimers. The... Okay, sorry. Planar travel may result in death, permanent damage, or encounters with beings beyond one's imagination. Ownership of this book does not guarantee safe travel to other planes, and unexpected encounters with planar portals often lead to swift and gruesome death. Such a death, or any death for that matter, cannot be found the fault of any Miramir involved in the archiving of this book. <laughs> the Planescape Archive will add 5 planar lineages, 13 new subclasses, 2 new backgrounds, 10 new feats, 18 new spells, 30 new magic items, 12 new monsters, 100 planar trinkets, just over 200 adventure hooks, plus a planar adventure for third level characters. This is just over 120 pages in all, and as mentioned, it will cost you about 15 bucks for the PDF or 30 bucks for the hardcover. One of the new lineages is the Eugolian, and that term may sound familiar as a Eugoloth is a type of demon, which Yes, the, the Eugolian creature type is, is fiend of medium or small size, and along with this lineage comes a few boons, such as combat awareness in which you can add your proficiency bonus to your initiative rolls, plus being a fiend, you will have resistance to fire damage and will have advantage on saving throws against spells. There is also the Angelborn, which we talked about a little in our last video covering the Bairnoth, Bairnoloth, um, there is the, the Farborn, the, the Modian, and the Nixian, a, a good variety that's going to add a good amount of flavor to your plane hopping party. The 13 subclasses, um, I, it's crazy. Uh, they're, very, they're balanced very well. And you'll get one for each of the following. For Artificer, there's the Planar Wayfinder. Barbarians get Path of the Planescar. Bards will see a new College of Celestials. Clerics get Clockwork Domain. Druids see the Circle of Arcana. Fighters get Planar Knight. Monks can commit to the Way of the Old Ones. Paladins will take on the Oath of Exploration. Rangers can become Elemental Guardians. Rogues will see the Guide. Sorcerers will have Planar Heart. Warlocks will become the Archmage. And Wizards will are simply all about Eldritch Magic. On the <laughs> super rare occasion that I get to play a game, my favorite class to play is the Rogue. So let's jump into what the Rogue subclass guide gets. In essence, you have uh, been places and have seen things. Those places are very likely other planes. And those things are quite likely monsters and, and sinister nasty creatures. As such, you know the ins and outs, and at third level, you gain access to experience in the wild, in which you gain proficiency in nature, perception, and survival skills. You can pick two of those skills, and your proficiency bonus is double for any ability checks you use or, or that you make using them. Also at third level, you get safe passage. And this one is, this one's pretty cool. Okay, breaks down like this. You can spend 10 minutes going over the dangers of a specific area and creatures within uh, 30 feet of you gain what is called a safe passage die. A D6, a D6. During the course of that next hour, that player can then roll the D6 and add the resulting number to a strength, dexterity, or constitution ability check or saving throw. The best part? <laughs> when you, 
uh, you, you can wait until after you roll your d20 before you decide to roll your safe passage die. You can only roll and use the safe passage result once, but at level 9, this rogue's ability increases the die to a d8, and at level 17, it increases to a d10. At ninth level, you gain mobility tactics. When you're fighting something, you can use your knowledge of the terrain to outmaneuver your opponents. In essence, you do not provoke opportunity attacks when you, you move. At 13th level, uh, physical prowess kicks in. You are simply aware of the dangers around you and you can use your reaction to gain advantage on uh, strength, dexterity, or constitution saving throws. At 17th level, you get improvised improved mobility tactics where when you use your dash action your next weapon attack has advantage and if that attack lands you deal an extra damage equal to one roll of your weapon damage plus your wisdom modifier now real fast before we jump into the rest of this book i need to thank these channel supporters their contributions allow me to not have to take on sponsored ads which we all hate and, and i'm sure many of you guys watching would skip anyways if you would like to contribute to my channel and have your name listed here, I'll, I'll leave information down in the comments as to uh, how you can become a, a YouTube or, or, or Patreon member. Now, as mentioned, there are, gotta remember, two new backgrounds included in this, uh, the Plain Touched and the Planar Nomad. The Planar Nomad is as it sounds. You have spent a good part of your life traveling between different planes of existence, which in turn gives you some planar knowledge about almost any given plane that you may step foot into. Um, you'll, you'll know some of the more uh, major threats that exist within that plane and will have advantage on survival checks to help you find a, a safe place to camp. Whereas the plane touched gives you uh, a tiny amount of access to planar magic due to the various planes that you have uh, traveled in and around and, and to. We also mentioned that there are 10 new feats, and I'm not gonna go into each one, but I will detail out the fire touched. You have extensive experience in the elemental plane of fire, which in turn grants to you a bonus action, uh, the, the ability to attempt to catch a creature on fire. It's a ranged attack, and on a hit, that creature will take 1d4 damage, uh, fire damage, at the start of each of its turns. Also, each of the feats come with the standard benefit of being able to increase a stat score uh, by one up to a maximum of 20. Just that, that different feats uh, will, are going to provide different stats that you can choose from. Now, as for spells, there are 18 new spells. Again, like the feats, I, I can't really list all of them, but I am partial to Corpse Explosion. It is a fourth level necrom necromancy spell available to clerics and wizards. You'll need a mostly intact corpse, and then you'll <laughs> explode it. Uh, creatures with a 20-foot radius of it must make a deck save. Uh, otherwise, they are going to take uh, one, uh, 10d6 necrotic damage. And if you yourself are within 20-foot radius of that explosion, you are going to gain 5d8 hit points. Casting this with a 5th level spell slot or higher, that damage increases by 1d6 for each spell slot above 4th uh, level. And the healing increases by 1d8 for each spell slot above that 4th level. There are 30 new magic items that are granted in this Planescape archive, as opposed to the three that were given in the official Planescape book, and I'm going to spoil a couple. There is the Arcane Breastplate. While you wear it, you get plus one to your AC, plus you have resistance to force damage and are immune to damage from magic missile. There is the Flute of Angel Summoning, which we mentioned in the video about the Bairnaloth. Uh, this flute will allow you to summon a powerful Celestial to help aid you, which is, if, if you are going Going up against demons or devils, uh, that's just going to be a major boon. There is the, uh, <laughs> the the potion of animate skin. Drinking this potion gives you the immunity to all damage for one minute. There are 27 more magic items. Some go into a lot more depth, but come on, I, I'm not going to spoil everything in here. Monsters get uh, 12. You get 12 new monsters. And again, I'm not going to spoil any of those as there's really, that's kind of more of a, a DM's knowledge, something more that the DM needs to know as to the players. Okay, I'm going to spoil one. The chaos ooze. And I really like that word ooze. It just kind of rolls off the tongue. Ooze. 
The chaos ooze the, is it's it's the force of chaos manifested into physical form, capable of uh, extreme destruction with an armor class of six and twenty d ten plus one hundred hit points. It has a strength of twenty three, dexterity of two, constitution of twenty, an intelligence of one, a wisdom of fourteen, and a charisma of five. It has conditional immunities against being charmed, exhausted, grappled, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, knocked prone, restrained, or being stunned. It has damage resistance against four force, necrotic, and radiant damage, and it has a challenge rating of 10. The Chaos Ooze is amorphous, allowing it to move through a space as narrow as one inch wide. It has primordial backlash in which if piercing or slashing damage is landed upon it, it can deal 1d12 damage back. It has also Spider Climb, which allows it to climb difficult surfaces without need to make an ability check, and it does not require air or sleep. It can make a pseudopod attack that deals 2d12 plus 6 damage and the target is considered grappled which at the start of each grappled turn that creature will take an additional 1d12 damage plus it has crawling doom in in my mind's eye I kind of see it uh, spreading tentacles out in a 30-foot radius, and it pulls everything in. Creatures pulled in in this way need to make a DC 17 constitution safe, else they will take 5d12 damage, and the ooze will regain hit points equal to half the damage it dealt. And to top it off, non-magical weapons, or, or objects rather, that are not worn or carried are destroyed. I will also cite this. There are additional stat blocks peppered throughout this book. Some appear in the adventure itself, like the uh, NPC Gaia Gray or the monster depiction of the um, uh, Feral Mind Flayer. We are also given 100 planar trinkets, such as a watch that keeps time for a 20-hour day or, or a petrified snake head. There is even a bolt of lightning that has been frozen in time. And, and I do have a hard time kind of imagining uh, what that looks like. Perhaps it's, it's super tiny, like, uh, oh, 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 uh, lightning caught in a jar. And you might also find a key that unlocks a door in the city of Sigil itself or even a preserved Kraken's eye, or, or well, uh, listen, the, the list of trinkets is extensive, but it's just chock full of super fun. The adventure hooks provided are peppered throughout uh, each given monster, but we also too are provided with hooks based on specific planes provided in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Plus, Matt has also made a table where you can roll that infamous D30 if you want to randomly pick the plane and then roll on that plane's adventure hook table. One thing I'll ask is that if you uh, enjoy seeing what third-party content creators are up to, and if you would like to see more reviews of third-party material, give this video a like. I'm going to use that uh, that number of likes as, as sort of a litmus test, test, if you will, that will in turn tell me to make more videos like this covering other third-party content creators. Now, what do you guys think of Matt's Planescape Act, uh, Archive book? Is this something that you plan to check out? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and, and let me know, too, which subclass option sounds the coolest. Which one would you like for me to do a full-on uh, feature video of? Again, talk to me down in the comments, and until next our paths cross, may your planar travels be exciting and full of adventure.